What's up and good morning guys, welcome back to another video. I don't know if I'm excited about this video or if I'm gonna regret even putting it on video because once it's on video then well we kinda gotta make it happen. But we've got a big announcement here in regards to the old Bronco there behind me and well this thing has been putting in some work. I mean you can see we got some paint down there, uh, well, we got a scratcher. This is uh, this is my ticket out of having to do this YouTubing career, you know. You know, let me see what are we gonna win there. A million, seven fifty, or five hundred thousand. Well, that's not enough to retire on. Let me know down in the comment section. If somebody handed you guys a million dollars right now, what would you do? Let's see how many of you guys would like make smart decisions and how many of you guys would blow it in like a week. Um, let's see. In the back here, we got some paint rollers, a level. Um, well, you know, you always gotta have the Clorox wipes when you're a germaphobe. Yeah. The old Bronco here, she has been the work rig. I've actually used all three of uh, the vehicles that we have out at the ranch as work rigs this past couple of days. Been working over at the homie Danny's new warehouse, which we're actually gonna go to right now because you always know, work before play, um, we gotta go check in on that project. But man, we had the old single cab out this week, the crew cab out this week, and then we did the last little bit of clean up there with the Bronco. You can see our fence up there. I've, I got half of it painted. Um, and then we ended up getting a uh, giant rainstorm that came through. So I raced and raced and raced till about nine o'clock at night the day before the rainstorm only was able to get half of that done. But for now, we're gonna go uh, check on the job site. Me, Dave, and the homie Jesse knocked out a ton of framing over the weekend. Danny's on a super tight deadline to get this room built in his warehouse. So we are trying to make it happen for him. Um, the drywallers were supposed to be there yesterday. We are going to see if they showed up. Then we're gonna meet up with the homie Nick, which you guys really enjoyed the build series on his truck. We'll see if he's in his truck. I'm not sure if he's actually gonna bring his truck. He might be in his work truck. Say hi to the guinea hens. Hello, guinea hens. Hello. Keep eating all the spiders and stuff. You can see with every storm that comes through, you know, we lose some tree parts. Uh, there was a big tree. See how there's that big tree right there? There was one next to it. Well, that, that thing fell over. Well, guys, this place has uh, taken a transformation here. Danny and them are getting all moved in. And thankfully, thankfully, the atrium is still here. We're moving some air up in this place. AC is kicking. It feels freaking amazing in here. It's too bad there's no AC in the shop, but that's why we're building the room that we built. Now, the last time we were here, this whole back warehouse shop area was just completely full of tools and tractor parts. I mean, there's just shelves on shelves on shelves of tractor parts. This whole back room was just all kinds of crap. It's been accumulated over, you know, Lord knows how many years. As you can see, it is all nice and cleaned out now. Danny's got some stuff that they've been moving in over here. And then behind me there, you see the room that uh, me, Dave, and Jesse built. Uh, as well as we did a little divider wall right there. There's gonna be like a little tool room on the other side. So that one didn't need a lid. This though needs to get air conditioned because it's where their printing equipment is gonna be. And apparently those printers can't get hot. So it's dark in here. Uh, we don't really have any lights in here. That literally just did nothing. Uh, however, we've got the room all framed up, all insulated. The drywallers came yesterday and they got the, uh, looks like they got the ceiling done and then started working their way down the walls here. Uh, and it, geez, you're probably not even gonna, hold on, there we go. It already feels a lot cooler in here compared to the rest of the warehouse. I mean, we were here this past weekend and it was probably about 120 degrees inside the warehouse when we uh, got this knocked out. Now, one spot we didn't show when we actually did the shop tour um, right as Danny was purchasing this place is sweet shop bathroom here. And it looks like the paper towel dispenser tried to attack somebody at some point, but they really liked their showers here. So even the shop bathroom has its own shower, shower curtain. I don't, I don't, well, she got a little leak there. We'll have to get that fixed, but interesting stuff. Interesting stuff here. Now, we were given a two week timeline to get this all done, built, insulated, drywall finished, and ready for them to move in. And because me and all the homies are busting our asses on it, um, it's looking like we're gonna finish that in about a week. So that's awesome. You know, and it helps out Danny greatly. And because we're here, I might as well show you guys just how much stuff was moved out of this yard. Um, again, if you go back to that video and you wanna see all the old antique tractors and cool trucks and stuff that were here, it was posted a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago or so, but you guys remember this whole area was just cram packed. I mean, there was a big couple of big overhangs here with a bunch of crap underneath it. Um, this truck is still here. Apparently this thing, uh, you know, was damaged when they were trying to move it. So all the junk that was here, I mean, this whole area was just junk. Obviously this is all Danny stuff. This is all their stuff as well. Um, but it's all been moved to the lot next door. And then I guess at some point, I don't know, it's gonna get sorted. Or it's just gonna live there until that lot gets sold and then they'll do the same little shuffle again. But this place just got cleaned up like freaking crazy. Okay guys, so it is officially announcement time. Uh, well, first of all, let's talk about the Bronco here. You guys remember a couple videos ago, I started peeling all the vinyl wrap off and 
got a good majority of it, but eventually just decided I was over it and gave up. Well, Papa Rhino put in uh, about two to three days worth of work and he ended up getting the entire hood stripped as well as the entire roof up there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Props to him. Um, we still need to take off these work for decals because they really don't look good in gold. They match nothing. It was just the color that I had to lay underneath real quick um, when we kind of did the embossed look in the vinyl. So uh, those will be coming off and then we still got to kind of figure out what we're going to do with this thing because I think it looks so much better with the black and white scheme versus just all white and it does kind of look goofy right now. Kind of checkerboarded there in black and white. Let's not get distracted here we've got a mission so you guys can see we've got three vehicles lined up here and if you guys are uh, already doing the math in your head here you know what's going on two of these vehicles have something in common one is the odd duck out and well it's not just the fact that they're both white my 2016 GMC Denali right there that is like my pride and joy my freaking baby ended up building this thing and then basically got set up to go to SEMA of 20 16, 2017, don't quote me on that. I don't remember exactly what year it was. And then once you like know you're going to see him, then you spice things up even more. But this bad boy was my freaking baby, still is my baby, and that was built for SEMA 2017. God, I don't even know. Anyways, then we fast forward to SEMA 2019, and that is where the Mama Rana Tahoe comes into play there. Ended up building that thing uh, for SEMA, and it was actually lowered, if you guys remember, from those years. That this thing was on a McGoy's lowering kit and the thing actually was freaking awesome i liked the way it looked on some 26s first time i've ever done a lowered vehicle first time i've ever done a big giant wheel low profile tire uh, i know it wasn't as extreme as some people would do but that's like way out of the comfort zone for us and i actually loved the thing i think these tahoes look freaking awesome lowered with big wheels however the original plan with it was to put about a six inch lift kit on it so that year i built the tahoe for basically what anzo lighting wanted they wanted a street lowered vehicle in their booth and that's what i gave them then once we got back from SEMA, um, we pulled the lowering kit off. We ended up running a McGoy's lift kit. Um, it was a McGoy's lowering kit, and then we went to a McGoy's lift kit, both of which rode and ride currently freaking awesome. Then we got the Rona for 2020, then 2021, they were all weird about like, oh, all kinds of mandates and masks and all kinds of stuff. Some of you, you know, respected the fact that I didn't want to go um, in terms of like, I don't want to follow a bunch of rules. Uh, the fact that we can host this giant convention with a ton of foreign countries all coming together, but you're worried about a mask that whatever, you know, we're not gonna go down that road. However, I decided to sit out SEMA 2021 for that reason. Now, here we are at SEMA 2022, and I was like, well, yeah, you know, I'm finally gonna go to SEMA without a vehicle, and it's gonna be so stress-free. We're gonna show up, you know, the day before day of, we're gonna relax, we're gonna go enjoy the show for four days, and then come home. Well, about a week ago, I got a phone call from the homie Chris, truck guru, some of you guys may know him as, and he's like, hey man, I got a company looking for a Bronco. And I'm like, oh man, like, <laughs> I wanted to finally go one year without you know, committing a vehicle. Um, Cause if you guys have seen those videos, it's, it's not fun. It's not as fun as it sounds. So anyways, we talked through a bunch of stuff and basically came to an agreement that I was happy with, he was happy with, and the company that we're gonna be working with was happy with. So here's your announcement guys. The Bronco is going to SEMA this year. And by this year, I mean in a couple of weeks, because that's all the time that we have to get this thing ready, uh, which is gonna be brutal if you guys have ever watched. When I built this truck, I actually built it for myself and had most of the stuff already dialed in prior to knowing we were going to SEMA. And even with that, we ended up literally bolting these bumpers on last minute. They were still wet. There's still my fingerprints on the back of those bumpers right there. Um, Zach was bolting them up the night of, or the night before I had to take off to Vegas. So even though I had that thing super planned out, there was a, still the last minute SEMA crunch and I started months and months ahead of time on, there it is, there it is, the Denali. The Tahoe wasn't as bad. You know, there was a couple things like getting the grill painted that took a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but there wasn't a whole lot going on to it. It wasn't quite as showy as the Denali was. And I didn't buy the Bronco thinking I was gonna put it in shows, do the SEMA show truck thing. I literally wanted to finally buy like a practical daily driver, put a mid-travel kit on it, it'll handle down my dirt road great and then you know that's it this that's what that that's the goal of that thing well so much for that happening <laughs> i don't know why i signed up for this so not only was this totally dropped on me last minute there's a ton of stuff that needs to go into this thing to even like make SEMA worth it and make it happen as you guys know i've ordered the uh well i have the baja kits pre-runner kit i have the front end kit um which has the king shocks and it has the upper and lower arms and a couple other parts in the steering and all that to make that work one thing i'm missing is the rear kit and the rear kit didn't really exist when i ordered my front kit even now ordering the rear kit like king shocks are still the hold up on these kits obviously the kits are made to order but you're still fighting on getting your king shocks got the front kings like three months after i got the front kit there is no time 
to uh, order the rear kit to get the Kings in time. So I have been scouring the internet a bunch. You guys gave me a bunch of leads and well, I found some rear shocks. So we're going to be going to pick those up at some point later in this video. Um, shout out to Michael Cox over at Bronco Factory for having a set and selling them to me. You're awesome, brother, thank you. But yeah, we'll see those in a little bit when we go pick those up. So that's like hurdle number one and we haven't even really, we haven't really started. So essentially I have about three-ish weeks, maybe, to get this stuff done. Um, I'm not gonna announce what company I'm going with just yet or what booth we're gonna be in. Uh, but I will say it is another indoor booth. And if you guys remember the videos from the Tahoe, I said I would never do indoor booths ever again. They are freaking miserable. So there's a whole lot of stuff that I said I would never do again, and well, here we are. Um, indoor booths are, it, yeah, it's crazy. Um, stay tuned for when we go to SEMA, and you'll see why being inside is so much worse than being outside. And one of the things I like to do with my SEMA videos is I like to show you guys the real. I mean, I do it with all my videos, but when we go to SEMA, I don't just sit there and show you guys all the flashy, flashy stuff and you get distracted. I show like, the real real what it's like getting into SEMA how to get to SEMA you know the chaos and the issues you're gonna run into um, the drama whatever you know like we show all the real behind the scenes stuff so if you guys like that get ready because there's gonna be a lot of it with this one but here's like a little rundown of what we're gonna have to do here so obviously we got our suspension handled hopefully we're gonna go you know see if we get the right shocks today um, we'll have front and rear suspension handled I believe I've got wheels and tires picked out and handled. We gotta do flared fenders because we're not gonna be able to clear 37s. I mean, we might be able to, but it's gonna rub like crazy clearing 37s on uh, the Baja Kits three inch pre-runner kicks. We're only going three inches taller. So now we gotta get fenders ordered, delivered off to a body shop to fit them and paint them to match all in the span of like three weeks. Um, we gotta do bumpers. Those will be getting uh, at the end of this month getting here, which means I've only got a couple of weeks to get those all dialed in and on. Uh, let's see, we got exhaust coming, we got, I don't know, it's gonna be a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that's gonna be coming for this thing, but like, I'm already at the limit of way, 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 way too close. Um, even the shocks that we're picking up today have to go straight to get anodized. Uh, we'll get torn apart, then they get anodized, and that's a whole nother like, yeah, weeks and weeks and weeks of waiting. So I am beyond freaking nervous. Now, I am, uh, you know, while I'm excited and it's a challenge and it's fun and it's cool content for you guys, um, it's definitely a stress that I was not anticipating having, you know, at this time of the year. I mean, we've been so busy with construction and with work for it and just the other YouTube stuff and the ranch stuff that I had zero plans of taking on a build for SEMA. You know, this thing was gonna get built at my leisure for myself. You guys are gonna see Stress Ryan here on the channel. We got at C Bailey 619 here. What? Jeez, guy, your freaking work truck's looking like my work truck. Holy oh, crap, bro. Over. What? You're gonna die, man. It's too Come many on. chemicals. They gave you one of those for free. So Chris, you think between Two Idiots Garage, we get the Bronco ready in time for SEMA? No. No? <laughs> what? Dog, you're putting on your work slides. Like, let's just start tearing it down now. Dog, I got, I got a thing that's called a job. Why? I, I try to figure that out every single day. So yeah, not only do we gotta wait for parts, we gotta wait for stuff to get finished, powder coated, anodized, painted. <laughs> then we gotta get it all assembled in a timely manner and hope everything meets up and everything works. And then, then we gotta get it to Vegas. Oh, what's today's video about? You're late, the video already started. It's about letting everybody know we're going to SEMA. Why does that look so small next to you? Because it is small. There we go. Yep. yep. Nice dog, nice. It's the same in real life. Oh, okay. Are you going to SEMA, Chris? I'm trying to. We're trying to get the crew out there this year. So if any of you guys want to come see us at SEMA, make sure you guys come on out. So nobody want to see you? See what I got to deal with, guys? See what I got to deal with? What are we doing with that truck? 6-0? Let's do a 6 -0 SEMA build. Speaking of SEMA builds, one thing I hate about SEMA um, is people that take like the same build, tweak it just a little bit and bring it back every year. Like to me, that's lame. I've had many uh, offer to take the Denali back to SEMA, just put different wheels and tires on it or do what everybody does. Just change the powder coat color and bring it back and just act like it's something different. To me, I don't like that at all. Like you'll never see this thing at SEMA again. It's done, that's it. It, it served its purpose, went to SEMA, now it's my baby. I don't even really like taking it to shows anymore because it's been to all the shows around here. Like it's time for something new. Now, before we take off today to go pick up the shock, show you guys a little, little around the neighborhood here. I don't wanna get too into their stuff, but um, I made a little Instagram video because a lot of you guys comment like, oh, your neighbors must hate the fact that, uh, you know. Did you just fall off the fire truck? <laughs> Jeez, 
your neighbors must hate the fact there's a fire truck there and all these vehicles parked in the driveway. And I was like, so my little, my little Instagram video was like, oh, your neighbors must hate you. And then it was like the neighbor, and then it pans over to the street and it's like the neighbors. And then you can see the neighbors got some freaking wicked car collections. And at some point we have, like we are planning on doing a video together, it just hasn't happened yet. I mean, what you see is like one one hundredth of the car collection, but check this thing out. I'm not a, an old school car guy, I'm not into the, you know the Supras and the GTRs and all that stuff. Um, it's just not my. It's just not my thing. Well, you want to show the Supra? They, want to see, no, the one next to they don't want to see your your truck. They don't want to see your truck. Um, however, the neighbors really like all that stuff, and they're super into Datsuns. And check this thing out. When I saw this thing roll up the other day, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just the the livery. Is that what you call the graphics on these things on a race car? But this thing is freaking sick. Chris, I want this. It's got a signature on it. I don't know who signed it, but probably some race car driver. But this thing is freaking rad. So don't worry guys, the video is coming of their car collection, but I just wanna show you guys like, we're in the right neighborhood. Look, this guy parks his dump truck there, his excavator's parked by his front door. We got all these cars, these cars, these cars, these cars. Yeah, we're in the right neighborhood. Right, Chris? Yeah. I just parked my car in front of some random house. <laughs> He's not lying. He's not lying. Let's go get our shocks. Okay, so we are going to race now to meet up with Nick, who again is doing me a huge, huge solid here by picking these shocks up and meeting me halfway. So we get to enjoy the very first bit of the SEMA crunch here. Now, Nick went ahead and did a little bit of filming for us picking these shocks up, so let's cut to that while we drive an hour. We're here at uh we're here at the Bronco factory. It's gonna be, I think, here in the back. So let's go uh let's go check it out. Let's go get these kings. I'm here for the Kings. <laughs> little sniff check. What's up, buddy? Well, I didn't get eaten so far, so that's that's good. <laughs> hey, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you. Vince. Hey, Vince. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nick, nice to meet you. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. Yes, uh, here to pick up those coilovers. Are we on candid camera? Yeah. <laughs> give me give me a little tour of what you guys are working on. Okay. Well. Yeah. Come over here. All right. This is not seen before. We have not posted any pictures of this on any social media channels. This is our new Gen 3 trophy truck Bronco chassis. That thing looks mean. We're gonna be building the biggest, baddest Bronco flying through there that you've ever seen in your life. What kind of axles go in there? That's a like the axle that goes inside the house. Yeah, whatever, you guys just make whatever it, right? Afford. Yeah, Jumbo 36, 40 spline, whatever, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is no joke right here. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen any joints or what are those times, I guess? Yeah. I'm yeah. I haven't seen anything like that before. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, we're getting ready to prep this one to cut the bot, the, the floor and firewall out of it. And we basically set our chassis up underneath it and start building from there. This is awesome. And you guys got quite the display of Kings over here on the wall. Oh yeah. Yeah. The so more on the ground. I gotta ask, like, how long is how long has it taken you for like the shocks I'm picking up, the coilovers? How long did it take to to get them in? Oh, you the probably ordered them. Ones, like eight months or a year. Yeah, I called all over, and you you're the one that had them. So yeah. I mean, people can check sell you guys out. No, I know because I didn't want to break up a set. Yeah, yeah. Twenty one. Ford Bronco. There you go. Right here. Yeah. Okay. That's them. Yeah, he's gonna be super excited to have these. Yeah. What year is this? This is an eighty one. 81. Yeah. <laughs> so I would assume maybe the, the suspension work is worth more than... The truck itself? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. just did all the suspension on it, so it's all fresh. So now the guy's going to take it and make it run, the guy who owns it. So. Wow. So this truck has full set of trophy truck shocks on it, four and a half inch. Yeah, those things are two. massive. Yeah. That so reservoir, this, I mean, that's that's huge. I've never even seen shocks right. like that in person that big. Right, so this truck came to us to do all the, we call it heavy lifting fabrication work. Yeah. So now all the fab work's done, it's gonna get shipped back to Iowa, and the guy in Iowa will assemble it with an LS3 and wire it and paint it and stuff, so. Wow. Yeah, you can see we make these parts. So this one's actually getting shipped back to Florida. So they come from all over for us to work on. No kidding. All that, I mean, yeah, it's on the other side of the United States. Yeah, Jeez. so this one is just basically a refresh of some, like a, they call it a stage four kit, which is basically bypass shocks in the rear, deeper strings, uh -huh. coil over in the front with uh, solo beams and base arms. So we just basically took everything apart, make sure it's all good, clean it up, paint it, put it back together with all new ball joints, wheel bearings and stuff. And then Vince is like electrical diagnostic guru, so he fixes all the bullshit wiring problems that these things are notorious to have. 
Jeez. So between yeah. that and we got five guys, so we just stay busy working on Broncos. What about the new ones? You guys getting many of those in? Yeah, not a lot because there aren't a lot out there, but yeah. I have one myself. Okay. Another guy that works here has one, and we've been developing some parts for them. We make carbon fiber fenders for them. We make upper con- billet upper control arms. Okay. Uh, we actually helped develop the King shocks that you're taking home to Ryan. Uh-huh. Uh, we helped develop those with King with the valving and install and set up. Been involved with the 2021 stuff pretty pretty good since since they've become available. I was one of the first people in Southern California to get one. All right, you want to see? <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> right? We get to see them before Ryan okay. does. <laughs> Hopefully they're there. Okay. Well, we got to make sure there's two of them in there. Uh-huh. Look at that. Oh, my God. I You know what? I only see one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Ryan, you're only getting one shock. <laughs> Right on. No, that's that's awesome. Those things are beautiful. Oh yeah, they're gonna look good on there. Well, thanks for coming by the factory. Make sure you call us at 951-420-6922 for all your King Shocks or Ford Bronco needs. Well, I appreciate it. These guys are super awesome. We got the coilovers in the truck. We're about to head out, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks, Bye. man. Bye. We'll see you later. See Enjoy you guys. Enjoy your shocks, buddy. <laughs> we'll see you at SEMA. All right, Ryan. We're back to you, and uh, we'll see you soon. And get you these coilovers and uh, get them on the, the Bronco soon. All right, y'all, we've made it. I mean, we've got, we're in the shadow of old glory right there. Look at it, just so freaking beautiful. Let's go, cool, Motorsports. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Can I give away a free t-shirt? I'll buy it. Yes. Okay, yeah. all right. How do we do this one? <laughs> I don't know. Comment your size down below. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Nick was gracious enough to save me a couple hours out of my drive time today because I also have to drive like nine hours tomorrow. So not looking forward to that. So okay. very grateful, buddy. Getting these opened up. We got the goods here. Oh, there okay. they are. Dang. Found them. You know how they do that. They put the, uh, the resi up underneath. Yeah, they're not easy to pull out. No. So these look like the longer ones. I hope they're the longer ones. I probably should have confirmed that. Uh, let me see. Well, it's funny, guys. I think it might have been like maybe the second time I ever hung out with you was meeting you in a random well, it was a dirt lot then, <laughs> yeah, picking up Chris's lot. lift kit. So, you know, we don't just joke about it. Nick's not new to the parts game. Still need to see if these are the right length ones. We're going to pull that up right now. There's two versions of King Shocks for the Broncos. <laughs> if I get taken out by a Kia Soul, that's the worst way to go out. Uh, there's two versions. There's like the stock length and then there's the zero to three inch. Obviously, we need the longer because we're going to be raising the front up. What are they doing? Nick, he just wants to get like real close to you. Like, dude, the thing's got the turning radius of a freaking bicycle. I know. Get out. <laughs> Um, so we're, we're double checking right now to make sure. Either way, if these are the shorter ones, we just put a coil spacer up top. That'll get me through what I need to do. 2239A is... Oh, the longer ones. So there are the longer ones. There you go. Sold! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we already bought them. <laughs> it didn't matter. Yeah, we already, <laughs> it was already, we already done deal. I just need to know if I'm going to drive home, I'm <laughs> buying the spacers or not. Okay, guys, well, one giant piece of the puzzle there has been solved. It is, it's, I mean, it feels like day one. Um, and we are already rushing. So now I gotta rush to Down South Motorsports. They have my front King Shocks. They've already got them pulled apart and sent out for um, anodizing. So obviously these need to match and we really don't have a whole lot of time here because it takes four to six weeks for the anodizer to get these things done. So here goes nothing. We're trying to get there before they close. It is already kind of late because, well, we ran into some delays this morning. <laughs> Yay, SEMA. Now, since I've got a little bit of a drive ahead of me, let's talk about the Bronco here a little bit. Um, I've always been against like self-driving cars and any type of automated stuff like that because to me, it's super sketchy. I know there's, you know, supposedly computers can think better than you can, but whatever, 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 you know, we're not even gonna go down that route. But I will say this thing's got a couple of cool features on it. One of which is like the lane um, departure assist. It doesn't just alert you that you're getting out of your lane. It'll actually kind of steer you back in. Now my favorite feature that this thing has is the auto headlight dimming. And I know that's not super new or anything like that, but um, Pablo Rhino's 2021 F450 has it. And I think this has a better version of it. It, it works better. His kind of gets weird if you're driving through the city at like stoplights and stuff. It's constantly flickering on and off. This, this seems like a smarter version. But being that I live out in the country, you kind of have to have your high beams on and there's always traffic coming the other way. So you're constantly flicking them off, flicking them off, flicking them off, flicking them off. Um, having it do that for you is super, super nice. And then third is the adaptive cruise control. So basically I could set it to, you know, allegedly 88, you know, that might just be like, you know, 65 legal and whatever, whatever. And then I can set the distance I wanted to follow that car in front of me right there and it'll speed up and slow down accordingly. 
to me, and for whatever reason people get upset when I say this, but cruise control has never made sense until now with adaptive cruise control. Maybe it's because I don't live on like giant long stretches of road, you know, in the back country where nobody lives and there's no traffic. Um, but out here in California, you constantly have cars speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, cutting in front of you, doing all kinds of weird stuff. So anytime you hit your brakes, turn your speed, your, it turns your cruise control off, and then you gotta turn it back on. And then, oh gee, somebody jumped out in front of me, tap my brakes, the cruise control goes off, and then you gotta turn it back on. Like it, it, at that point, I'd rather just, you know, feather my foot on the throttle. But having the adaptive cruise control, um, you know, I don't do a lot of long road trips other than tomorrow. We're gonna put it to the test with like an eight or nine hour drive, but it is, it is very nice. It is very nice. And then, you know, I can just sit back, relax, and, uh, you know, let this thing gauge the speed in front of me. You know, clearly the guy in front of me is going allegedly 83 miles an hour, and it, it just paces. Alrighty, guys, we have arrived at Down South Motorsports. These guys are like, the absolute best when it comes to tearing apart shocks, rebuilding shocks. Um, I think they usually tear them apart to like rebuild them. And then you get guys like me that are like, hey, take these brand new shocks, pull them apart, that way we can re-anodize everything. Cause obviously it ain't like powder coat where you can just like unbolt apart. There's a lot to these shocks that need to get pulled apart. And essentially you are rebuilding them cause you can't reuse the seals and all that stuff when they go to put them back together. So, you know, a pain to have brand new shocks rebuilt. Okay, well. Oh, she's holding the Bronco unlock itself. Shocks are dropped off, and I think I'm gonna do something that I hadn't really planned on doing. But since I have a really long road trip tomorrow and it's been hot out, I think it's finally time. We'll just we'll just move that cashew right there. It's finally time to remove the plastic off these seats. Now, trust me, guys, I wanted to be, you know, one of the only Broncos at SEMA with the uh, crappy dealer plastic on the seats, but I can't do the back sweat anymore. I've held on as long as I could. Almost made it to fall slash winter, but ooh, hey, 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 we can leave the headrest on there though. I think we gotta do it, guys. Oh, man, this hurts my heart. I'm gonna hold on to these though. You never know, you never know. You know, we might have to put them back on. But I think it's best. <laughs> Dude, this Bronco's thrashed. Look at this. Look at this, we got, we got the RC car wreck there, spare wheels, GoPro mounts. Uh, Rough Country Cooler, still working great though. Love that thing. It's gonna take a lot to get this thing SEMA show ready. However, it is a challenge I have accepted and albeit it wasn't uh, you know, exactly in my plans this year. We are here and one thing I don't ever do is, is I don't ever leave people hanging. So if I say we're gonna do something, we're gonna do something. I have committed at this point to SEMA. That means we are taking this Bronco to SEMA one, in one way, shape or form. I hate the SEMA crunch because there's a lot of things that I can't be in control of. Like right now, I just drop these parts off. Um, down south pulls them apart and then they send them out to get uh, anodized somewhere else. It seems like my front shocks are almost done. So those are gonna be back in time. Now what's gonna happen with the rears? I'm not sure. We shall see, come along for the journey. Here we are guys, was not planning on this. 2022 SEMA Bronco. Get ready, the channel gets another SEMA build. But with that, we're gonna wrap up as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content and the stress that you're about to see me go through. Don't forget to give this video a like and get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.